Hi everybody, it's Franny, and while we still have the Speedster in the garage, I thought it'd be really fun to do a compare between the Speedster and a Cabriolet. As an added bonus, this car is a 1955 pre-A car, and this is a 1958 T2A. So that means almost nothing to you unless you're really deep into 356s. But it's kind of neat. There's a lot of differences between the two cars, and it shows how Porsche made so many changes, even in a short period of time. So let's go ahead and take a look at both cars and see the differences and the similarities. I think this is going to be super fun. Now, one of the biggest differences and the easiest tell of the difference between a Speedster and a Cabriolet has to be the windshield. So on a Speedster, you'll see this wonderful rounded chrome windshield here. And this rounded design Porsche brought through all the Speedsters that would come after this car. On a Cabriolet over here, you'll notice that the windshield is not removable and it's body colored. So you can impress your friends next time you go to a coffee and cars and so, oh, that's a Cabriolet. How do you know? Because it's got a body colored windshield surround. It's also a bit higher and um, so it's quite a bit different in that way as well. The fronts of the cars are actually pretty similar, I would say, uh, from say the A-pillar forward on these two cars. They're, they're actually very similar. The little cowl up here is a little bit smaller, but other than that, they're pretty hard to tell from the front. And that, once again, is quintessential Porsche, right? But in the back of the car, they are pretty different. Take a look at the width of this cowl back here. So from the top down to the top edge of the boot cover here, look how wide that is on the Speedster. Now let's go take a look at the Cabriolet. It's very different. Here on the Cabriolet, we can see that this rear cowl is really, really narrow. Even if I pull up the top cover here, you can see that, I mean, here's the edge of the top. It's still just a few inches. So that's very different than the Speedster. One iconic touch on the Speedster has to be this silver strip that goes all the way down the car. You see this on all the Speedsters. And if you look on a Cabriolet, it doesn't have that strip going down at all. And I have seen some Cabriolets with it. I think you could possibly get it as an option back in the day. But for the most part, for most Cabriolets, you won't see that stripe. So it's another thing from the side that you can easily tell the two cars apart. Another big difference between the two cars is the top. Take a look at this headliner on, the, on this car and look how fluffy it is. There's a huge amount of padding on a Cabriolet top and you'll see that it actually sits up quite a ways off the top, off the back of this cowl here. It's just a much bigger, much more dense top. The mechanism is different as well. So let's take a look at the Speedster. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So on the Speedster, there's no padding at all on this top. It's just, it's just literally the material with a little bit of a headliner on it. And the top mechanism is quite a bit more dainty and much lighter. And so that brings me to the design difference between these two cars and sort of their purpose. It's important to remember that this car has a very specific purpose. It was built specifically for the Southern California market and the racing, that club racing that was so popular in the 50s. Max Hoffman, who imported Porsches for the whole country, went to Porsche and said, you know what, we need a car for the Southern California market. And this is what they came up with. And one of the cool things, we talked about this neat windshield here, but this windshield is removable on the car. So you could take the car, drive it on the normal streets and get to the racetrack and and pull the windshield off of it and then it becomes more like a spider and then you could drive all day and race all day long and then at the end of the day you can put your windshield back on and drive home that's very cool but it's it's very different than the whole concept for the cabriolet so the cabriolet has a completely different sort of use this is more of a gt car it's a very comfortable car it has a great it has that great padded top, it's well insulated, it has a lot of sound deadening. The seats are more fluffy and a lot more comfortable than the, than the tighter bucket seats that you'll find in the Speedster. 
But this car just has a different purpose. This was more of an everyday driver car. So you can see how Porsche, even back in the 50s, was thinking about, hmm, maybe we should have sort of a race bred car and then maybe more of a GT car that people can drive every day. It's very cool to see how uh, even back in the day they made two cars that sort of seemed like they overlap, but there was a definite difference between the two. The interiors of the cars are pretty, pretty different. They really are. So in the Cabriolet here, we've got much more comfortable seats, but they're not, they're not going to hold you quite as well for racing and all that. We have one accessory that didn't come in a Speedster, and that would be the radio. So Speedsters don't have radios, they don't have glove boxes, and they don't have a, this is an ashtray, they don't have that either. Another really big thing that this car has that the Speedster doesn't have is roll up windows. So on the Speedster it doesn't even have windows. It has these little curtains that go in the side. It's kind of interesting, but totally different. The door cards are different. Uh, there's a pouch here on the cabs and uh, it's just a higher level of trim. These were more expensive cars in the day. The Speedsters were actually quite a bit cheaper. So very big difference in the trim level of the two cars. Here in the Speedster, it's very different. Take a look at these iconic Speedster seats. They're, they're pretty thin on the padding here. They're decent padding on the bottom, but they're, they're wonderfully cupped. And this car actually has a little bit of an option that you can tilt them backwards. So you can see in the back that they use the, the same material that they've got for the uh, carpet here on the back of the seats. Uh, also, look at the door panel here, very stark. We don't have that roll-up window at all. We have these two things. Now, what could they be for? Hmm. Well, on a Speedster, this is your window. So believe it or not, this thing pops in these two little, little holes here like this and then snaps on down here and that's your window. It, and the top sort of comes over and mostly fits around it, but it, I know it's more of a suggestion than an actual window, but it is what Speedsters came with. It's kind of interesting. Once again, Porsche trying to remove everything that's heavy, everything that's gonna interfere with performance because this was to be a performance and a weekend race car. Take a look at our dash here. This is quintessential. Look at this wonderful binnacle that they put on this. I love this. Now this was brought across to the design for the Boxsters as well. Really kind of neat. You just have your two gauges here and you have a little oil gauge up here for temperature. Uh, but you just have your speedometer on one side and your tachometer on the other side. Very simple. The key here is a simple key just goes in and you turn it on, but it's got a push button start. How cool is that? 1955 push button start. The rest of these little lights, one of them's for the generator, one's for the oil. And uh, that's pretty much all there is. There's windshield wipers here and these are the lights. You do have a horn. Other than that, the car is very, very basic. We do have heat. That's what this knob is for down here. Uh, but you can see just a rubber mat on the bottom floor here and everything else is just very stark. Now in the back, the owner of this car has put in a seat back here. Now, but originally these cars didn't have seats. They didn't have anything back here. So it would just sort of, the carpet would just sort of roll down. There were no back seats in the back of a Speedster, but the mounting points do exist. So he found a set of back seat he could put in here and it actually looks kind of cool, it's kind of neat. But the important thing to just sort of take away from this is just how stark it is and how sort of race bred this is really supposed to be. I think it's great and it really feels uncluttered in the car as well when you're driving, it's really kind of neat. One telltale sign to be able to tell a real Speedster from a replica Speedster is almost always the parking brake. So where is the parking brake on a real Speedster? It's kind of interesting. It's up here and it's a big latch that you pull back and then you can push this to release it. And that whirls it down and then we can pull it back. It's kind of neat. If you're ever at a show and you're really wondering, well, is that a real Speedster or is it a replica? This parking brake always gives it away. So another big difference between the two cars is actually the weight. These 
the Speedsters are actually quite a bit lighter, a few hundred pounds lighter than the Cabriolets. And that makes sense with all the extra metal on the Cabriolets, the padded tops and all the extra sort of fluffy bits, that all adds up in weight. So these cars, quite, the Speedsters are quite a bit lighter actually, which also helped them feel a little bit peppier. Now, as far as engines goes on these cars, you could get pretty much any engine you really, really wanted on the either car. You could get anything from this normal engine, the normal push rod, in this case a 1500, in this case a 1600, just based on the year. You could, you could get the same basic engines, or you could go all the way up through the 4Cam Carrera engines, and those were amazing, but you could get you could get that in either car. So it depended on how you spec the car. Pricing, this was the cheapest car that Porsche sold and they were pretty inexpensive. They were under $2,000, they were right around $2,000 and that was back in the 50s, so fairly expensive back then. But compared, these were quite a bit more, several thousand more. So the Cabriolets were the top of the line and the most expensive. Now today, the Speedsters, as we all know, are the, are the one that's most sought after. It's got that great low California look, and because these cars were so cheap, they weren't well taken care of, and there's less of them available. But uh, the Cabriolet, which was the most expensive, is now sitting price-wise pretty much in the middle of the 356 range. But they're both just wonderful cars to drive. Let's talk a little bit about the difference in the years between the two cars. Now our Speedster over here is a 1955, making it a pre-A car. This car over here, our Cabriolet, is a 58 and it's a T2A and there were a lot of changes between 55 and 58 actually. One kind of cool thing is the wheels changed in diameter. So these are 16 inch rims on the pre-A cars and these are 15 inch rims on the 58. It's kind of neat. One iconic bit in the older pre-A cars has to be these beehive tail lights. Now they were still present in the T1A cars in 57, but back in the day these, these little teeny beehives are so iconic. They're really, really cute. Another thing you'll notice is that the exhaust comes out underneath the bumper here. So that was another thing in the older cars. The exhaust was underneath the car. Another thing to note was take a look at our, uh, our light here for our license plate. It sits above the license plate. So that's kind of interesting. All right, so remember all of that. Let's go take a look at a T2A car. On the T2A cars, we have teardrop taillights. So we don't have the separate uh, turn and brake lights. Now we have it all integrated into one unit with these cute little teardrops. Our license plate light here is now a shine up instead of like it was on the older cars, a shine down. So that's kind of interesting. And then new for 1958, having the exhaust coming through the vertical overriders on the American cars. So this is a US spec car, so it has these big chrome overriders and things. And this caused quite a fuss back in the day. A lot of people didn't like it because it was a little too Cadillac-y and a little too American-y to have the exhaust coming through the bumpers. But it's kind of neat. It, it kind of cleans up the back end a little bit. I really like it. Well, you're probably wondering a bit of how these cars differ in their driving. The Cabriolet is a bit heavier, I would say, and a little softer ride. And as you'd imagine, the Speedster's a bit more nimble. But I've got videos of each. I'll go ahead and link them down below and you can check those out. So this was really just to me kind of a fun little compare between the two cars. If you've got any specific questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and we'll get right to them. Thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to our Patreons as well. If you, if you really enjoyed the video, consider sharing it with a friend and give it a thumbs up. So thanks again and until next time, safe travels. Bye.